With that, let us officially commence our program for the day. I invite Ambassador Pradeep Kumar Rawat, Ambassador of the Kingdom of Thailand, His Excellency Mr. Chak Chai Vidya Vajitul, Dr. Chang Ching Khoi, and Professor Tung Yo Chan onto stage to light the ceremonial lamp. 那么，让我们有请印度驻华大使罗伯顿先生、泰国驻华大使韩灿台先生、江景怀博士、董友成教授上台点亮灯盏，以此正式开始我们今天的活动。It is my privilege to invite the Ambassador of India to China, Sri Pradeep Kumar Rawat, to deliver the welcome address. 现在让我们荣幸地邀请印度驻华大使罗伯顿先生致欢迎词。is taking place during the official time of Diwali. As many of you would know, Ramayana is at the core of this festival. Through this conference, we also celebrate the Ramayana's enduring presence in Asia, especially Southeast Asia, where the epic has been integrated into art, dance and literature. Since we are in Beijing, it's also important for me to recall that one of the oldest version of Ramayana in Asia was actually in China, which came in the first century AD, some people say even before that, and got uh, through the medium of Buddhism, to the Jataka tales uh, in, in China. And in modern times, uh, Professor Chi Shen Lin, uh, I believe that many of you who study India in China would remember him. Uh, he brought that knowledge into contemporary uh, time by rediscovering the entry of Ramayana and its story into China. And he's also probably the only scholar in China who has been awarded by these two governments, by the government of China as well as the government of India. Uh, the Ramayana 
is believed to be the oldest poetic work of human civilization. While the historians have not come to a definite conclusion about the time period when the Ramayana was written, there are astronomy-based research findings that date back Ramayana to about 7th century BC. Other historians believe that certainly uh, Ramayana was written in 3rd century BC, uh, while some parts of Ramayana might have been written after that. Ramayana is integral to Indian civilization. It has transcended the age and time with perennial philosophy teaching generation after generation the universal and eternal message of righteousness. In that sense, it is a literary work of great significance to mankind as it has lessons applicable for all time and for all conditions of life. The Ramayana has also transcended geographical boundaries, adapting itself seamlessly integrating or merging into local cultural tapestry while maintaining its core value. It has fostered a shared heritage among nations, creating connections to storytelling, performance, and other forms of artistic expression. For example, in Cambodia, Rama is known as Pri Ram and Sita is known as Nyang Seda. Ramayana, known as Rimake, has many Buddhist influences and unique stories of its own. Indonesia has more than one version of Ramayana, Kakavin Ramayana, Serat Rama, Charit Ramayana, Javani Uttara Khan, Viserat Khan, and Rama claim to name a few. In Laos, the Ramayana takes place on the banks of river Mekong. The story of Tharam as part of Buddhist traditions in the form of Jataka tales is so important that it has become Lao's national epic. In Malaysia, Hikaya Seri Rama undergoes an interesting twist with Maharaja Vana in Ravana depicted more just and loyal than Lord Ram. In Myanmar, the Yama Sattva is also considered a Jataka story where Rama is known as Yama and Sita is known as Sita. In Philippines, Ramayana has a Maranao version called Maharadya Lavana. It is in the form of a song Darangal, which is also intangible cultural heritage, which is played to the traditional sinking dance form. In Vietnam, evidence of Ramayana is found in the southern Vietnam kingdom of Champa. The story is part of a historical tale of fight between Champa and the northern Vietnam kingdom of Annam. With regard to Thailand, my dear friend Chachai will certainly <coughs> mention us the significance of Ramakien to Thai culture and nation. In China, the Ramayana arrived with traders and Buddhist monks traveling from India. The story of Ramayana is told through two Jataka tales with its message of filial piety brotherliness and righteous conduct, which must have reverberated well with the Confucian ideals prevalent at that period. As a vehicle of transmission of cultural, ethical and philosophical ideas, the Ramayana not only forms part of India's invaluable cultural and religious heritage, but has embedded itself in the cultural and spiritual tapestry of various countries of the region, and thus contributed in creating our distinct Asian identity. We have with us today a panel of distinguished scholars and diplomats who will share their profound insights on the subject. I hope 
that the discussion today would create new perspectives and foster a deeper understanding of Ramayana's influence in creating a shared Asian consciousness. Thank you. Thank you.